Heidi ho there friends, Bobby here today. Hey folks, today I'm going to show you how to put an alternator on a 1999 Jeep Grand Cherokee. So stay tuned friends and we'll get this done. Friends, this Jeep that we're working on today has a 4.7 liter V8 engine in it. And right here is the culprit. This is our alternator. Now on this year model vehicle, there was two types of alternators. One was a Denso type, one was a Bosch type. You will have to figure out which one yours is simply by looking at the label and you can tell your parts guy so he can get you the right part. Next, you may wonder how did we determine that this vehicle needs a battery? We simply have hooked up a voltmeter to the battery. Now with the engine running, let's go back and look at our voltmeter and as you can see, we've got 11.3 volts. That tells me that this alternator is not putting out right now. Your normal battery voltage with the car running should be anywhere between 13.6 volts and 14.2. So this car definitely needs longer. So let's go get one. Folks, the first thing you want to do when replacing an alternator is disconnect your negative battery terminal so that you will not create any sparks when removing the alternator. Friends, the first uh, tool that you may need is a belt tensioner tool. And as you can see here, it's about two and a half, three foot long. I put a 15 millimeter socket on it. We are going to reach down in here and put it right here on the end of the belt tensioner and actually give it a good old pull here to where we can release our belt and we will slide that off and continue on. First thing we're going to do is take a 10 millimeter wrench and we're going to go right over here to the battery terminal that goes to the alternator. We're going to break that loose, spin that nut off, and lay that cable out of the way. After the cable's laid out of the way, there's a connector right back here on the back of the alternator and you can just squeeze it with your thumb and lay that wire out of the way as well. Okay, now we're going to use our 3 8 air ratchet here with a couple impact swivels. You will need a 13 millimeter and a 15 millimeter impact swivel. Looks like we have three bolts here holding it on. I'm just gonna to point to each one of them. One's right over here, that's the 13 millimeter head. There's one right down here, has a 15 millimeter head. And looks like one right over here. It looks to be all there is for now. So I'm gonna get busy zipping these things. Okay, with all three of those bolts replaced, you may have to have a pry bar or a long screwdriver to kind of help um, get the alternator sort of picked up out of the uh, area in which it's sort of wedged. And as soon as you wiggle it back and forth a few times, you should be able to remove it. Now once it decides to let go, you can simply just lift your alternator out of place. And we're gonna go ahead and take this to the parts store with us so that we can get our core money back before we actually purchase our new alternator. So let's go. Okay folks, just got back from the parts store. We got a brand new remanufactured alternator here ready to install. Um, one thing that you may have to do with any new alternator that actually uh, use up around a um, portion of a aluminum bracket, a lot of times you'll see that there's an insert in here and depending on the vehicle, you may actually have to drive that back a little bit just to get it uh, to where you can get your new alternator in place and a simple way to do that is just going to take the bolt that uh, goes to that um, Part of the bracket and you can turn it in don't tighten it all the way down You can just leave it out a little bit and then you can take your hammer and Actually tap on that a little bit to drive that bushing back a little bit and that will allow you uh, To make it a little bit easier to get the alternator on and we actually did have to move that bushing on this one because when I first went to test fit it, I couldn't get it to fall into place. So now, let's see if the new alternator will fall into place for us now. And it looks like it will. So friends, we're going to go ahead and install our three bolts back in place. We will get them just finger tight and then we will tighten them on down. Okay, now with the, all three bolts just started a couple turns in just to get the thread started, we'll go ahead and zip each one of them down with the air ratchet. Next, we will pull the lever on our tensioner and actually put our serpentine belt back onto the alternator. 
with the belt in place, take a flashlight and just look down to make sure the belt didn't slip off of uh, any of the pulleys or get like a groove of the belt off. So this all looks good. Then we will go ahead and hook our battery cable back up to the uh, stud on the alternator, installing the 10 millimeter headed nut. And then we will snug that down with our 10 millimeter wrench. After popping the little protective cover back over the head of that 10 millimeter nut, We'll reach back here with the connector going to the regulator and we will plug that okay, in. The last thing that we're going to do is go ahead and hook up our negative battery cable again. And we will tighten that nut down with a half inch wrench and we'll be ready to crank it up. Okay folks, hey, with the uh, engine running, we can look at our voltmeter volt meter and see that we're putting out 14.06 volts, which is definitely charging. That is within the range that we need to be in. So I'm going to call this job complete. Okay, folks. Hey, that just about wraps it up for today. I want to thank you for stopping by and checking out our video on how to install an alternator on a 99 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Don't forget to subscribe. Tell a few friends about us. Leave us a comment, and we will see you next time. Take care.